Why do Muslims believe in life after death? How can you prove logically about the hereafter, about life after death? And many a times there are non-Muslims who pose this question to me. Brother Zakir, you're a medical doctor. You have given a lecture on Quran modern science. You are so scientific. But how do you believe in this blind belief, you know, life after death? Science hasn't proved it. So they pose the question that if Islam is a logical religion, how do you justify life after death? I tell them that life after death is not just a blind belief. It's a logical belief. And I've given the talk on Quran modern science and I've proven that there are more than 6,000 verses of the Quran out of which more than a thousand verses of the Quran they speak about science. But today, science hasn't advanced so much to prove everything of the Quran. So if we analyze, say approximately 80% what the Quran speaks which is related with science has been proved to be 100% correct. 20% it is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. We don't know. So when 80% of the Quran is proved to be 100% perfect according to scientific facts and 20% is neither wrong, neither right, not even 0.1% of the 20% has been proved wrong, my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and 20% is ambiguous, my logic says that inshallah even that 20% would be correct. So it is a logical belief. It is not a blind belief. This is one way of proving life after death. The other strategy I use to prove about life after death is by asking a common question. That is robbing good or bad? And I'd like to ask you that question here from the audience. Is robbing good or bad? Good or bad? Bad. Who says robbing is good? Raise your hand. No one. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Large audience, maybe more than 10,000. Not a single person says robbing is bad. Now I, I am trying to impersonate. For example, I am a logical person. I am a scientific person. I am behaving like a non-Muslim like an atheist but I claim myself to be a logical person and a scientific person and I say that robbing is good believe me I am a logical person I am a scientific person I say robbing is good and I like robbing and I am giving you a chance this large audience of more than 10,000 people 15,000 people I am giving you a chance to prove to me robbing is bad and I will stop robbing. I've told you, I'm a logical person, I'm a scientific person. Give me one logical reason why robbing is bad for me and I will stop robbing. I will tell you why it is good for me. I can, when I rob a person, you know, I can go and eat biryani, I can go to a five-star hotel, easy, easy money. Now you tell me why robbing is bad. Don't give me 10, 20 reason. Give me only one logical scientific reason why robbing is bad and I will stop robbing. Can anyone give me? Yes, brother. If you rob someone, can you speak a bit louder? Mashallah. Very good. Brother Sikh, if I take something from someone, I am taking away something from him. I agree. It is a loss for that person, but benefit for me. I agree with you. What I told you, prove to me why it is bad for me. It is bad for the person who I have robbed. What I told you, prove to me why it is bad for me. I am logical. I am scientific. I agree it is bad for the person who I have robbed. Tell me why it is bad for me. I will stop robbing. Yes, brother, loudly. Someone will rob me, will I like it? Very good. Brother, I am a big mafia. I have got 100 bodyguards and all of them are behind the stage. I am a big robber. I am not a small robber. 
for small robber it is bad someone may rob you i am a big mafia i have got 100 bodyguards all behind you know all we take a 47 you know i am logical i am scientific i am a big robber for small robbers it is not good somebody may rob you so why it is bad for me I can't hear you. Anyone? Yes, brother. Uh, hello, my name is Nadim. Why is robbing bad for me? Because uh, you will be bad for other people. I'll be bad for other people. I agree with you, my son. Why it is bad for me? Because I agree. You, because your name is going to be bad. My name? See, my name is very good. <laughs> Why it is going to be bad? I am telling you my name it is see, if my name gets bad I have no problem as long as I am benefiting you know when I rob someone you know maybe 100,000 dirham if I rob I can go to a 5 star hotel I can see a movie I can enjoy I can eat biryani easy money other people are just logging out me I get easy money you know robbing is very easy anyone Fine, someone will say that the police will catch me. The police cannot catch me because the police is on my payroll. I have the ministers in my pocket. I have the police in my pocket. I'm a big robber. I'm a mafia. And you know in most of the countries, the police and the ministers can be in your pocket. They're on my payroll. So therefore, whatever answer you give, in no way, and I've done this exercise in audiences larger than this, 50,000 people, 100,000 people, no one so far has been able to tell me one logical reason. I am a non-Muslim. Fine. I am a non-Muslim. Very logical. Very scientific. No one can prove to me why robbing is bad. You want to kill me? I have got guards. Before you kill me, my guards will kill you. Yes, brother. I think why it would be bad for you is because when you start robbing, you will you'll be collecting a lot of wealth. Very good. And that, that wealth, you'll be worried about to keeping it safe. And I'm that, that is, will take your sleep away. It will take the safety away from your family. And it won't give you peace of mind. And when you lose your peace of mind, you lose everything. Brother said, if you have too much of wealth, difficult to keep. You know, there are many wealthy people sitting here. Difficult to keep, very easy to keep. There are many banks here. Why? I won't keep it in my pocket, you know, now you have got credit cards, you have got checkbook. But For you, who is a small man, when you get 1000 dirham, you are afraid my 1000 dirham will go away. I am a multi-billionaire. You know, all these banks and all. For me, it's very safe. If I keep it in the bank and everything, lot of profit, lot of interest. Whether for small people to keep a 1000 dirham, they are worried. For me, I am a billionaire. But, but then again, you'll be worried about banks losing all the money with the recession. And these are, these, are, these, are, these, are, these are natural calamities which Bro you will suffer. Brother is saying that if I keep it in the bank recession, I'll own the bank. The banks have no problem. What do you know but that even in recession, it's not only in bank, you can keep in wealth, you can keep in real estate. It is one option I've given you. You can keep in shares, everything. If the recession goes down again, it will come up. You know, Dubai has gone down again, Dubai will come up. Yeah, Fine, it will come up. No. It will take 4-5 years. I am so big, I have got no problem. But, but then there is no answer to that. The... Yes. No answer, I will give you the answer. I agree with you. There is no logical reply why robbing is bad, why raping is bad, why cheating is bad. Now, we turn the tables over. You are the... You are the non-Muslim robber. Logical, scientific, I am a Muslim now. I as a Muslim, I agree with you that logically to prove robbing is bad is very difficult except what I'll do first, I'll prove to that person the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've given the talk, is the Quran God's word? It's for two hours, I don't intend giving the talk here. In that talk, I've proved logically, scientifically, to the non-Muslims, with the help of the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. 
after they have proved to him the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unjust in the least degree. Now, so the non-Muslim will tell me, you are talking about Allah, I believe in him. But you are saying that Allah is not unjust. I want to know and ask you this question. I do agree with you that for a person who's robbing, he would enjoy it. But if the same evil is done to someone who's close to him, will he like it? If suppose someone robs his father, his father doesn't have bodyguards. Will you like it? And the answer is no. Someone robs his uncle. Will you like it? The answer is no. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just, there is so much of injustice done in this world. There are many robbers we, we know they are robbing, yet they live a luxurious life. They have mansions, they have palaces, and they die. And everything is over. The reply is given in the glorious Quran. In Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2. Allazi khalaqal mata wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185. Kullu nafsin zaykatul maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. And the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. Whosoever is saved from the hellfire and enters the garden the paradise he has achieved the objective of this world for this world is goods and chattels of deception so Allah says the final recompense is only on the day of judgment that means only believing in Allah is not sufficient one of the pillars of Iman is besides believing in Allah and the prophets and the books and the angels and the Qadr is to believe in life after death Without life after death, only believing in Allah is not sufficient at all. Therefore, one of the pillars of Iman is Akhirah, life after death. And we know that there are many robbers who are powerful. There are many thieves who are powerful. Mafias are powerful. Some of them get arrested. Some of them get punished in the world. Many of them go unpunished. So what kind of a test is this? So I will tell this rich person who's a robber, who's powerful, fine, I agree with you, you'll enjoy in this world, you'll sleep peacefully, easy earning, but what about the akhirah? What about life after death? There has to be a life after death. Only logically without life after death, the life in this world cannot be justified. When we talk about justice, for example, you might have heard of Hitler. He insinuated six million Jews. Today, if you arrest him, what's the punishment can you give? If Hitler was arrested by the police, what punishment could the law give him of this world? Maximum one death. What about the balance? Five million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand, nine hundred ninety-nine people he killed. You can only justify one death. But in the Akhirah, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 56, that as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to incinerate, burn Hitler six million times, he can do it. If Allah wants to burn him 12 million times, he can do it in the Akhirah, not in this world. In this world, whatever your police catches, you can maximum compensate for one death. That's the reason, logically, and to justify that robbing is bad, raping is bad, bribing is bad. There has to be something like Akhirah, there has to be life after death. Without life after death, only believing in God is not sufficient. Only believing in Allah will not justify why robbing is bad, why raping is bad, why bribing is bad, except with the concept of Akhira, as Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 185, Kullu nafsin zaykatul maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. The final recompense is in the day of judgment.